guys, it is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. Got some docking today in the great George Lynch. We're going to learn how to play Dream Warriors. I believe this is off the Night Round Elm Street Part 3 soundtrack? I don't know, whatever. Uh, one of those. And um, it's a fun song to play. Some pretty simple riffs and a very not so simple guitar solo by, by George Lynch. He's one of my favorite. He's got one of the coolest guitar styles in the history of rock. So if you're not familiar with George Lynch's playing, uh, it, Dokken or whatever. Actually, my favorite George Lynch album is the Wicked Sensation album off of the Lynch Mob. So if you want to hear some of the greatest guitar solos, of which he's pretty much just improvising, it's just it's pretty insane. Uh, check out that album. It's, it's great. So we're going to go through Dream Warriors, though, today. Um, hope you guys will join me. Now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring the notification bell so you know it's a new video. You can like and comment on them. It really helps out everything here. Um, and if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, You'll see a link in the description to my online guitar school. That's the best way to support anything I do online. Uh, my online guitar school is the GL365 Academy. It contains all of my courses from courses for complete beginners to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. I'm live there every weekend with the Academy members. You get full, well, just one subscription, you get full access to the entire school, any courses you want to do, and you get personalized support from me as well too. So please click that link. You get a free seven day trial uh, uh, with that link. So I will see you there. Let's jump into this. I'm in standard tuning here, and we're going to start with this little clean guitar uh, riff. And it kicks in. So this little riff, open A string, and you can have the seventh fret there on the D and the tenth on the G those together then back to the open A and then seventh on the D still but now nine on the G so like this and then you do that again and then we get this little ending now what that is it's the fifth fret on the D and the G together first you play those two hammer on the seventh fret on the G and then you're gonna pick those two strings again. Now, obviously holding the fifth fret there on the D st still, but now the seventh fret on G. Let's play this. Then you go back to this riff up top. But now, but after you've played this riff, don't just hold it. He starts kind of building up and just kind of hitting that open A string underneath, just kind of building the, uh, the tension. And you go back to you play the, that little riff again, and then we're going to end it with kicking the distortion. And this is the power chord off the third fret of the A, up to the fifth fret. Kind of hold that, and he adds a lot of vibrato to the chord sometimes as he holds it. And then we're into this riff. So that's going to be uh, the second fret there on the D and the fourth fret on the G. And then you're going to go back and hit the um, uh, muted a, a kind of slightly palm muted A string twice, and then back to the chord. So it's kind of uh, so. I'm sorry, it goes like that. Kind of you hit it twice in the open, then back to the chord, and then you kind of hold on that, uh, just hitting those. Um, the A string mutes for a little bit longer. So we had this like that. And then just take the chord that you're doing, move everything up one fret. So that's up to the third fret on the D, fifth on the G, and then the same rhythm against that open A string. And back down to the two and four. And then we're gonna just end it with the same, uh, the same C to D power chord. So we'll have this. Repeat. 
All right, then we get to the verse. Now the verse continues that same riff. So you're gonna still hear that riff. So you still hear that going, but um, the main part probably for that, at least for the first half of the verse, is this clean guitar part that they play was an overdub. So that's going to be open A string, second fret there on the D, fifth fret there on the G string. So you're going to pick across those strings from the A string to the D to the G, then the open B, and then back down to the uh, fifth fret there on the G. Pretty cool. And then all you got to do is add, to, to get to the next chord, just it's the same picking pattern, but you're gonna move from the second fret on the D up to the third fret on the D. You can use just your index finger to slide it up, or uh, George plays it with his uh, middle finger here at the third fret on the, the D, but then everything else is the same. So, let's play this. Then back down to the second fret of the D. So the, back to the first version of it. And then we had this ending. So that's gonna be, that goes when, when you're doing the power chords there and when you're playing the heavy riff that's still going on, right? Um, that's, when you're playing that, you have this in the clean guitar part, which is the third fret there on the A, second on the D, open G string. And then slide up to the fifth fret there on the A, and then you're gonna play open G, then the fourth fret there on the D, and then back to the fifth fret there on the A. So it is. So all together for the clean part. Repeat. So what I like to do if I'm doing this, I can maybe play that clean section twice and then kick it in like the second half of the verse, kick in that the, the riff. They're really both going on at the same time for the whole thing, but if you're just one guitarist in a band like George's, you can play like that and kind of do a pretty convincing version of it. So you just have the clean part done a couple of times and then kick into the... <laughs> Then we have this that goes to the uh, pre-chorus. So it just, it kind of cuts that riff off at the very end, leading into the pre-chorus. So, it, and, and when you get to this third fret there on the D and the G, slide it up to the fifth fret on the D with the seventh fret on the G. And then it goes in. That's the pre-chorus. takes us into the chorus. So, so, so when you slide up to that fifth fret there, then come, hit the low E, the E power chord. Open E string, second from the E and the D. Hit that a few times. Then we're gonna go into the, this G chord. So this G power chord, really. So it's a open G power chord. So the third fret on the low E string, use that same finger to mute the A. So there's nothing played there. Then the open D, open G, and then the third fret there on the B and the height. So they're all, they're all just G's and D's. So that's an open G power chord. And then you get to this chord, which is really like, an, uh, just like it's an E major chord if you want with the G sharp and the bass, which is the, uh, the third in the bass. So it's the uh, fourth fret there on the low E string. And then the second fret there on the A. And it really, you can have that E on the D string if you want. And that chord takes us to the chorus. And the chorus looks like this. Thank you. 
Back to the verse. I like that riff. All right, so uh, so out of this this chord, we get to the A power chord. That's the first chord of the chorus. Then it kind of muted open E, low E string. Then the first fret power chord, the F power chord, off the first fret of the low E string. So it is. And then you're gonna jump to that G power chord again. Power chord right there again. So this. And then we have this. So what that is going on there, it's this third fret there on the D string, open G, first fret there on the B, and first fret on the high E string. So strum across those. And then just, so instead of barring those top two strings now, you release that high E string. So just roll back onto the tip here with the, on the B string. So now it's just a third fret on the D, open G, first fret on the B, open high E string. So this. And then that G power chord again. So this, so kind of the second, that's like the first half of the chorus. So this. Now when we repeat, it's pretty much the same thing except for the uh, the ending. Right here. So instead of just going from the into that G chord, it does that same move. And then but it jumps up and grabs a C power chord. So it's the third fret of the A string. It puts a lot of vibrato on it. And then into that G power chord again. So you basically grabbed a C power chord real quick before you went to the G. And then it looks like we start the chorus over, but it's really just leading us back to the verse. It starts with the A, to the E, to the F, I'm sorry, to the G, and then we're back to the verse. And that verse is the same as the first one, with both of those, that like clean uh, riff and that heavier riff going on at the same time there. So the second verse is the same. It gets to the same pre-chorus there where you just kind of mostly just hold on that. Um, and then we get to the second chorus, which is slightly longer because it's leading us into the guitar solo. All right, so it looks like this. All right, so that right there is just kind of the same chorus, but when we get to the, we kind of can start over, like we're doing a, two choruses. Um, so we get to that, through that first, to that G where it's holding, and then there's this little extension there that leads us, it's really just the, uh, uh, you can kind of like a short little bridge that's leading us into the solo. So it's just that F, after, after you get that G, you just go down the F, back to the G, and then that, that same, E in first inversion, and then that takes us to the solo. So let me let me play you the uh, the rhythm guitar that's going underneath the solo first, and then we'll go through George's solo. All right, so it looks like this. to the, uh, the bridge there. So it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit, there's a little bit more going on with the, the chords than just in the, the chorus, the regular chorus. So it starts with an open A string, second fret there on the D, and a fifth fret there on the G. We're gonna have a little melody that moves on the G string. So just the fifth fret there on the G, then move that down to the fourth fret on the G, still the open A and the second fret on the D. And then, down to the normal A power chord. 
That takes us down to the F power chord. And then we have this. So that's a little bit different than what we did in the chorus. We're gonna play 0-3 muted on the low E, on the, on the A string, I'm sorry. Now hold that, and then you're gonna play that same chord that we did earlier, but now it's gonna be still the third fret, you're, still, you're holding the third fret on the A now too. Third fret on the D, open G. First fret on the B and the high E. And then, once again, roll over so you have the open E string in there. Down to that G power chord. So like this. All right, and then we uh, start second time through. It looks like this. So that's the same a little uh, melody off the A down to the F. So that much is the same. But here, here we go to a D minor chord. So we hit the open D string twice, and then strum across a D minor chord, which is second fret there on the G, third on the B, first on the high E string. Once you strum that, then the open high E string, and then the third fret there on the B and back into the same G power chord, and then that same E with the G sharp in the bass. When you hit this chord, you actually almost hear them on that A string, pull off two to zero. Uh, so you can put that in there if you want to. And then we're back to, and this is pretty much the same way as the first time through. Except it has that, same little ending chord there, that first inversion E. And then the last time through, so that is the same off of the A, it goes to the F and then just a, to a G. And then we have this little, so that's gonna be this C power chord off the A string, the third fret of the A. So that's the third fret of the A, fifth on the D. So I hit that chord, and then hit the A string a couple times there. So I'm holding up the third fret. And then I just move that note down on the A string one fret. Still hold that fifth fret on the D. Then to the G power chord real quick, and then that A power chord. And then you're gonna end it with a, that A power chord to the G power chord, and that takes us to the bridge. So we'll take a look at the bridge in a second, but first, I'm gonna play Georgia's solo for you, and then uh, do my best to show you how to play it. So here it goes. So that one is got some interesting little licks in it. Now, I'm basing this off of an isolated guitar track that you can find on YouTube. So I would suggest checking that out. There's because little intricacies of the solo that just don't show up on the original recording. And this isolated guitar track just sticks with the main line. So it doesn't have any of the harmony guitar parts in it. Um, so you can kind of really hear what the main line was originally, and then he just harmonized little sections of it. So I'm not going to do little harmonized section, uh, parts, just the main line the entire time, which is what I just played there. So let's start here with this uh, beginning. So once again, at the very beginning, there's a little pickup. So, but you really only hear this on the recording. So, um, but there is a little pick -up. So I'm gonna do it anyway, because it's, it's there on the recording. <laughs> so that's just this ninth fret there on the, the G, over to 10 on the B, back to the nine on the G. And then into a whole set bend at the 13th fret there. And then bend it up more at the very end. 
And then back down to the 13 without the bend. And then we have this quick little uh, hammer from 10 to 13 on the beat, pull back off to 10, and then a, a half step bend there at the 12th fret on the beat. And then kind of hammer 10 to 12 on the B, pull back off to 10, slide down to eight, and then back to the 10. So with it. And then slide up to eight to 10, back down to the eight. So we have this. Now here, you hear a higher harmony line but the, the main one is the lower one. So that's what I'm gonna be uh, showing you here. So that's on the B string. So you're gonna start uh, 10, 13 there on the B, up to 15, they're kind of staccato, then slide into the 17th fret. And then you're gonna play 13, 15 on the B. Then we just have that really quick line. So this is, that's gonna play 13 on the B, hammer on 15, pull back off to 13, over to a, a 14 on the G, and pull off to 12. So you can just kind of do it all legato. Go this. Sorry. And then we're gonna go into this next race. So that's gonna be a bend at the 20th fret of the B string. And when you get to the top of the bend, pick it again and release the bend, pull off to 17. And then over to the 19th fret on the high E string, half step bend. And then you're gonna do a 17, hammer on 19, pull off to 17, slide down to 15. And then from there, 17, 15 on the high E string, then 17, 16, 15 on the B, thir down to 13, then back to 15, slide to 17, back down to 15. Now here, we can, we're gonna do this. So that, like right there, so just basing it, doing it here, is because in the original video, that's where he's playing it. Um, George usually says when, he, when he's interviewed, he doesn't really know too much what he does on his solos because they're pretty much improvised. So he has a hard time kind of recreating them exactly. Because uh, he's just a real intuitive player, which all of us probably wishes we were. But uh, so sometimes it just kind of he, he can kind of get close to it, but he doesn't do it exact. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how he's doing it now. But uh, uh, but this it sounds like I always kind of reference things that were recorded right near when he was recording the original track, and and on the um, that would be an original like the official video, and he's down here playing it here. So we're gonna instead of like there or something. So we're basically gonna play the 15 on the B and then 12 on the high E and, and you're gonna be trilling between 12 and three. So I'm just, I'm kind of just doing kind of a little mini sweep across those strings, down, down, into the trill. So just kind of do that twice and then and then we're gonna do 15 to 12, 15 on the B, 12 on the high E string, and then back down to the B, and got a couple of pull-offs between 15 and 12 on the B. And then slide into 17 on the B, pull off 15, pull off 13. I'm sorry. And then you're gonna jump up way up here to this 22nd fret there. You can make it easier. 
and grab 17 on the high E, but I think he's up here at the 22nd fret on the B string. And then he goes into this kind of bluesy lick, looks like this. So that right there is back here at the 17th position. It's kind of based out of A minor blues scale. So that's the 17th fret on the, on the B string. Hammer 20, 17, hammer 20. Pull back up to 17. Then come over back to the 20th fret there on the B. Pick it twice. Over to 20 on the G string. Then back to the, seven, the 17th fret there on the B. Then we kind of descend the scale, 20, 19, 17 on the G. So this. Then you're going to play 17 on the G over to 17 on the D. So this. Then you get a little chromatic. So that's going to be 15, 17, 18, 19 on the on the G string. Pull off back to that 17. Pick it again, and then play 19 twice on the D. So that comes out of the bend at the 27. All right, from there we have this. That's a very, very cool lick, very George Lynch-esque. So that's a quick little, little trill between 17 and 19 on the D. So you quick little trill over to 17 on the, on the uh, G string. And then you're gonna do a quick little pull off 17, 19 to 17 on the G, over to that 17 on the D, and then you're gonna slide up 19 to 21 on the G. And then back down to that 19. So with this. One more time. All right, now this is another harmony section, but this one right here, the lower line is, the, well, this line that you're hearing here is the main one. So this looks like this. So that is going to be the um, 17th fret on the B string, hammer 17 to 18 on the B, and then 17, 19 on the high E string, and do a half step bend there, the 19th fret. You got to hold that a little bit, and then we have this, 17, 19 on the high E, over to 18 on the B, back to 17 on the high E, then reverse those two. Pick 17 and then back to 18 on the B. So this. And then we're going to go over to the 19th fret there on the G. Back to the 17 on the B. And then play, roll over to the 17 on the G. Or to the 19 on the G. And into it into a, a bend at the 22nd fret, and then we have this next section. So after that bend at the 22nd fret on the high E string, you place uh, 15 on the B, hammer on 17, pull back off to 15. And then place 17, 16, 14 on the G, hit that 14 a couple times, there's a little pinch harmonic there too. All right, then coming back up, it goes 16, 17. You can play the 17 twice. Then play the, back to the 15 on the B, 17. Pull back up to 15. 17, 16 there on the G. So it is. And then jump up here to the 20th fret on the B string. Bend and release over to 19 there on the G. Now you can do this bend that starts this tapping section. You can do it like start it there, which would make 
But I like kind of moving it down in, down here because it sets you up for the tapping. Like, and the tone does change slightly on that note, so I'm thinking he does do that. So that I move that bend that kind of starts the tapping section. The tapping section is this. All right, so it's kind of the same lick that goes across, but we're going to start here with that bend of the, the 15th fret there on the G string. I'm sorry, the G string, the G note, but you're going to bend up the high E string with the 15th fret. And then you're going to tap real quick at the 15th fret there on the high E string, pull off to the 10th fret, hammer 12, 13, tap at 15 again, pull back off to the 13 and then go back down with those same notes, so with this. And then it comes back up, and this goes back down, but not all the way up to the top note. Just like that. And then we start the, the main pattern that you're gonna see across strings, which is, that. So we're gonna go over to the B string now, the same frets, 10, get a hammer on, add an over from 10, 12, 13, tap 15, pull back off to 13, pull off to 12, pull off to 10. So we have this. So we start a little bit different on the high E string. And from there, we're gonna do this. We did that on the B string, and it was taken to the G string. The pattern will stay the same, but the notes will change. So it's now nine, hammer on nine, which is your index finger, 10, 12, and the tap note is gonna be 14. And then pull back off down through those notes. Then the same exact thing here on the D string, same frets. So we have. All right, and then what he does is he skips down to the low E string. So after the D, skip down to the low E, hammer on, that's seven, eight, 10. Then go over to the A string, seven, eight, 10 on there. And here you're gonna tap at 12, pull back off down through those notes all the way to back down to seven. Then hammer back on, go back up to the tap note, and then pull back off stop at the eighth fret. And that's where the bridge starts when it hits that, that, that F chord. It's gonna match that. So wait this. The whole tapping. So that's the end of the solo. Then it goes to this bridge section, which is really the only new riff we got to learn. To the chorus. So it's pretty simple. Third fret on the low E string. I'm sorry, third fret on the A down to the first fret of the low E string. So it's just kind of like you're changing it from third down to two on the A and then back to three. And you keep rotating it, it gets a couple of hits on the low E string of the first fret. So it's just kind of that pattern. All right, and then we take it up here. It's kind of the same thing going on on the A string except the root note the bass note is now the third fret on the low E instead of the first. So you just do that briefly, the three on the A, down to two, down back to three, and then G power chord. So like this. Do that again. G power chord again, but then that little transition chord that always leads us into the chorus. That E of the G sharp in the bass. 
and then you're back to the same chorus that we did earlier in the song. It's just extended a lot, and we have George's outro solo, which I'm not going to cover. I don't like doing outro solos too much. There's like too many vocals going on, I think. But, um, but it, that whole outro solo is just over the um, the uh, chorus chords, and that just goes on until it fades out. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a fun song to play. A challenging solo, of course. It always is with uh, George Lynch's solos. But hope you guys uh, got something out of this, and uh, I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.